What's going on guys? It's Julianus Monday! And it is somewhat easy dish Monday. We're going to do a couple different things. We're going to do a few dishes. So what's going on Connie Rodriguez? Where are you watching from? What's going on Katie? We're doing a couple different things today. We're making one of my favorite dishes that my mom would make as a kid and even as an adult. She would make chicken and biscuits. But this is going to be a little bit differently because my mom's not cooking this. I am. Hello, what's going on, Hunter? Connie, where are you watching from? Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to make a couple different things today. The first thing we're going to start with, because we'll need all the space we can get, is our pizza dough for Wednesday. And I told you guys I like to make my pizza dough ahead of time. And because I like to make sure that it proofs slowly and proofing is just raising. I like to leave it in the fridge for at least two to three days. Sorry, I had to take a pause for the cause. You gotta stay hydrated. And like I said, that hangs out in the fridge for two days. It gets a real airy, yeasty, almost bread-like taste and smell to it for that crust. So, start with that. And I'm pretty sure I've showed you guys this before, but this is how you wanna bloom your yeast. This is lukewarm water, about a cup and a half, and one packet of yeast dumped in here. And we've got our flour, we've got our salt, and we've got our sugar. The sugar actually feeds the yeast. God damn. The sugar actually feeds the yeast and helps with the growth of yeast. Sorry. I want to make sure you guys can actually see what's going on here. All right, so our flour, our sugar, and our salt is all in there. So we actually need the space for uh, this dish. So we're going to do this one for, for our next dish. We're going to do this one first. Then I'm going to show you guys how to make a cheddar bacon. Bacon was made in-house that we made the other day. And chive biscuit. Like I said, for everybody tuning in now, we're making pizza dough. So we're going to let that sit and start. There's about three cups, three cups of flour in here, about two tablespoons of sugar, and about a teaspoon and three quarters, almost two tablespoons or two teaspoons of salt, and then a cup and a half of water, and one packet of yeast. So we're gonna let that work and combine. If you guys don't have one of these at home, uh, get one. They're fantastic. But if you guys didn't have one. You can do this in a bowl and then mix it with your hands. It's just a lot easier when you have the old stand-up mixer. Okay. So give me one second. It's got to get a, uh, another heat-resistant rubber spatula. I like using these things for almost everything. They're great tools to have. They work really well. And somebody asked the question last week in my KitchenAid mixer, do you ever have the buildup that's on the side with all the flour not getting mixed in. And I said I absolutely do. It's one of the downsides to having a non-commercial grade stand-up mixer. But to nullify it getting not all that flour, you take this rubber spatula and scrape the sides. I'm starting off slow. And we'll actually pick it up. This is actually the mixing process. With a stand-up mixer. There's no incoming call. I'm gonna fucking turn off Alexa. I'm about tired of her shit. Right. So with the stand-up mixer, you generally do two different variable speeds. You can obviously see right here. Don't mind that dough flour. I'll put it this way. It's two to ten. I like starting off slow for the first minute or two, because this helps incorporate all of the flour. And this would be the more strenuous part if you were doing it by hand. Right? And this is also going to be where I'm going to see if I need to add a little bit more flour. Because depending on if you're in a humid place, a non-humid place, um, higher elevation, all will, um, 
all will dictate how much flour you actually need. If a recipe calls for three and you actually end up using uh, more, it's generally the recipe is either messed up or it was built for a climate that you're not a part of. So mountain elevation, you know, Florida, below sea level and humid. You know, so it just depends on where you're at. This actually looks like it's gonna form pretty well, so I'm, I'm gonna have to add a little bit of flour um, just so I can knead it once it gets out. The second time we mix this is actually gonna help that kneading process so we won't have to knead it as much by hand, but I still like to put my hands on the flour. And these are just some charred and caramelized onions that we're actually gonna use for our dinner tonight. So, let's go ahead, and this is gonna be the kneading process. When you go higher on the kneading process, you're putting more force in it, right? And this is where we're going to be adding a little bit of flour, just so it comes and doesn't stick off on the bowl. Right? You, don't, you want somewhat of an elastic and a sticky dough, but you don't want a whole bunch of stick. Right? We'll let that go for another minute or two, and then we'll make biscuits. Right? And I'll actually walk you through our biscuits on what we have. Now, when you're making biscuits, the whole goal to make a biscuit that's not Aurora, Illinois, that's where the Blues Brothers were from. Um, the whole goal behind making a biscuit is to touch it as little as possible. Right? The reason biscuits are light, airy, and fluffy, and not dense hockey pucks, is because the layers of fat you put in there, butter, and you're not overworking the dough. That's where most people mess up on biscuits, right? Most people mess up on biscuits because they add too much, or not enough flour, uh, not enough butter, and then they don't add, they add too much heat. I'm putting you guys down so you guys can see the work surface. Let's get you guys back just a little bit. I'm flouring this down, obviously, so I don't stick. And then I like to get a little bit of flour on my hands because this is a sticky mess, making with pizza dough. So like I said, Biscuit's biggest downfall is working them too much, not having enough butter, and pretty much just working them too much. What's going on, Tim? Making pizza dough. Now like I said, it is a little sticky, but that's okay, because we're actually gonna need this. I like the mixer doing almost 80% of the work. Right? When it does 80% of the work, you've got to do that much less. And I'm all about ease, and I'm all about something else doing 90% of the harder work when it comes to bread and pasta. Now, this is the same process of kneading I showed you guys last week on my bread recipe, those uh, those hoagie roll recipes. Now you can already start to see like how not tacky, see? It was this tacky before, right? You can actually get that and rub your fingers back and forth to get all that off, right? And I'm not gonna incorporate that in there because I've already got a nice ball of dough right here. So I wanna get most of this shit off my hands. It's the worst part about making any kind of bread or pasta is dealing with that shit. All right, so. Like I said, I like taking it, pounding it out, pushing down with my hands, and then going back and forth. Hello, friends with Lori and Juanita. Oh yeah, that's my mom and grandma, how are you? Are you watching from West Virginia? Are you watching from Ohio? Kentucky, where are you watching from? I am in miserably hot Deltona, Florida, with a heat index today of 106. Dog shit, if you ask me. I'm about tired of this heat. Want to move somewhere colder? Just got to talk the wife into it. I'm all about moving away, going to a different state. Love this state. It's where I was from. The only thing keeping me here, other than the the wife and kids saying they don't want to move, is my Orlando Magic. You know, I'd have to move somewhere that's got the sports package. Luckily, with the NBA League Pass, I can watch my Magic anywhere. So but that's the only thing that's really. Oh no! I d dropped my salt. And my flour. That's okay. I'll pick this shit up. Throw some over our shoulder. If you're into that superstition stuff. Pretty sure I threw it over the wrong shoulder. So it is what it is. Right. So. 
like I said, worst part, you know, most boring part about any bread making is this process right here. It's the most tedious. And like I said, if I wouldn't have used that stand-up mixer, it would have taken me an additional probably 10 minutes before this stage, just getting it there by hand. You know, it's not something, you know, I like to do, but it's something that I know how to do just in case my stand-up mixer does not work. And I encourage everybody to make bread. Sorry about that. Encourage everybody to make bread. Gallipolis, Ohio. Spent many a summers up there. My grandma and grandpa. I miss those days. I could go to the flea market. My grandpa would give me like a 20 buck, $20 bill. I can go and get a stack full of comics and get a couple action figures like so back in the day. God, I miss the 90s of being a kid. But this ain't too, too bad. I get to decide when I eat dessert. Man, I feel like an extra ice cream bar, so I'm going to get another ice cream bar. Right. So, what I like to doing, and I always break out this one. Whenever I do this, whenever I do anything with bread, I always break out this rolling pin. This rolling pin is way older than me. And I'll be 31 in August. This is my granny's rolling pin. So I think this thing's pushing well over 80 years. You know, it's one of the few things I have left of her. So any chance I get to break this thing out, I'll break it out. Like I said, I just like putting a little bit of even pressure on here. God damn, I spilled my bacon soda now. Look at that. Even pressure. Like I said, we're gonna ball this up and put it back in the fridge. So we're not gonna use it, but I just wanna make sure I get anything I might have missed. You know, some people may or may not do this with their bread. I always like to roll it on there and put old granny's love on there, right? Take this up. What I like doing is I like taking it and mixing it into a ball. Now, if this was a more tacky dough, I'd be able to sit here and roll it back and forth. But because there's so much flour on there, I can't. So let me show you guys a little trick because popping this back and forth and rolling it out really helps the dough ball up and it makes it rise evenly instead of it being too big or too small on one side and raising up in individual sides. So it's too much flour. Flour really works against us when we need friction, right? So you take the tiniest bit of water and you can see a little bit of liquid on this one, dry on this one, pat it just a little bit, shake off any excess and then tap that dough, and then you can get a better feel for it. It doesn't slide out of your hands or off the table as much as it did before. Now, just watching it might not look like it did much, but it would let me grab and shape and fold and pull it in the way I want to pull it. All right. So, we're going to get this. We're going to get our saran wrap. We're gonna wrap this bad boy up. And then we can move on to our biscuits. This pizza dough will be good by Wednesday. Now, this is gonna rise considerably. So, it may or may not bust out of here. So, I'm gonna wrap it a little bit. And I'll put it into a bigger bowl when I get some of those bowls clean, but most of my bowls are taken up right now, right? So that's our pizza dough. So, like I said, when it comes to making biscuits, your worst enemy is too much heat and too much working. Both are gonna, too much working of the dough. Both of them are gonna have the same effect by working, too much working of the dough, you're gonna melt it. Now, this is butter that I took, and I used a cheese, slice, a cheese grater to grate it into smaller pieces. Everything I put into the fridge to keep it as cold as possible. You can freeze the butter ahead of time. This is our cheddar. 
This is that house made bacon that I cubed, rendered off, and cut down. And this is our chives, right? Just simple green chives, you know. And we've got baking soda, baking powder, salt. and our butter. Now the reason I did the butter this way is because it's a trick I saw in uh, the restaurant I just used to work at. I'm not gonna name it, you guys have heard it. So, I don't feel like giving them any, any kind of word if I don't have to. If at all possible. But, pastry chef I saw it from, her name is Esther and she's cool as hell. And she would do that, whenever they would make biscuits, she would do that with the butter. Put it through a cheese process, or through a cheese grater. And what it does is because if you were to just cube it, you'd have to sit here and take it, and then mix it until it was bite-sized pieces. Now, I'll probably be called out or wrong for this, however, um, I think there is a lot of similarities to this type of dough and a croissant. Now, a croissant, back in the day, was done almost the same exact way. They'd roll out the dough, and they'd take sheets of butter, put them on there, fold it, roll it with the rolling pin, and then throw it back in the fridge. Then they'd pull it back out, roll it flat again, put another thing of butter in each individual fold. And I can't remember how many it was. I wanna say it was 32. And each individual fold would go, and that would put the layers and layers and layers of the croissant. And when it heated up in the oven and the butter started to melt, it would create steam. And you would have an airy dough. All right, so it's the same concept for our biscuits. That butter, when we mix it in there, and we mush it into the dough, almost so it's like coarse sand, is going to make our biscuits super light. Now, like I said, the worst thing you can do is overmix this, right? So I'm just trying to incorporate all that butter in there, right? And everything was sitting in the fridge ahead of time. And this is our buttermilk, whole fat buttermilk. Right. Now, we just want to mix this enough to incorporate it. Now, you can take this and put it into the same stand-up mixer at a lower speed and mix it just like, like we're doing now. However, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, the likelihood of you melting all of that butter is really, really high. So your best bet is to do it by hand and work quickly. Now, if it gets too warm, and this stuff is pretty cold because like I said, it's been sitting in the fridge for better part of, you know, four or five hours. So if it gets too warm, just throw it back in the fridge, but don't let it get noticeably warm. When you start to feel the chill kind of go out of it, you know, just pop it back in the fridge for a few minutes, let it come back together. And like I said, you just want to mix it enough where it's incorporated. And that's it. If you get too much heat in there, It'll melt that butter, and you'll have a hockey puck for a biscuit. Now, if you guys are talking, I'm sorry. I gotta move kinda quick on this one. If you guys are asking questions, I always, for any of the new watchers, I always go back and I answer everybody's question. I don't ever not answer you guys' questions. All right, so let me get this out. Start getting some of this off my fingers. Cause like I said, that. All this stuff, you know, with a pizza dough, it's one thing. It's something I'm not going to incorporate back into it because it's a little bit more dry than the pizza dough I was working with. But that's one thing. But stuff like this, you know, I made this bacon. You know, it took me a week to cure, a few hours to smoke. You know, it's expensive stuff. And I don't ever want to waste anything if I can help it. Right? I'm going to get most of that out of there and then pop this off to the side. So, we'll set that down at the bottom. We need to get all this off of us, though. Right. As 
as much as possible. Get our little bit of flour, we'll dump it out right over here, just so we have a little bit. I don't have to keep dunking my hands in there. Right. What I like doing is taking this, put a little bit of flour on, I pop it into the best shape I can, and then the rest of the work is going to be done by our rolling pin and our biscuit cutters. Let me just wash off my hands because I'm pretty much done with using my hands for this dough. Like I said, the rest of it is going to be this, this uh, rolling pin. And the good part about that is there's no real heat to this wooden rolling pin. So you don't have to worry as much. You still need to work as quickly as possible when you're making biscuits. But you don't have to worry about as much as your heat transfer from your hands to your biscuit dough. Right. So, roll it back and forth, back and forth. Let me actually get my bread knife here. My dough divider, bench cutter, it's got a couple different names, but it helps with me not having to put my hands on it as much. Right. Same thing, roll this back and forth. Now, if it starts to split like it's doing right here, it's perfectly fine. Because what we'll do after, after I roll this out, because there are gonna be pieces that, you know, come up to the end, and you wanna get it about a half an inch thick, because these are gonna, wrap, not a half an inch, I'm sorry, about three quarters uh, of an inch thick. Now, I won't be able to show you the full dish until after it's posted because I've got to let the chicken that I made cool. But you guys can go and say, hey, I learned how to make cheddar bacon biscuits. Now, I'm going to cut the first one and just see how and this is a biscuit cutter. About that. So what I might actually do is I might roll this dough back up, sadly. And roll it. I want it a little bit thicker than that. Right. So let's try it one more time. It's still pretty cold. Put a little bit more flour on there though. It's still cold, so we'll be fine. It's still gonna rise all right, but I just don't like the thickness of that one. Let's try it again. Take it. And I like giving it a little half turn. That way everything is getting its little, little TLC. Right? All right. Now I just want to push this down enough where those layers kind of come back together. All right, that's about as thick as I want it. So we'll get our little biscuit cutter again. And we'll start in a corner, right? There we go, look at that. That's gonna be an outstanding biscuit. It's sexy as hell and it's not even cooked yet. And try to get as close to the edges as possible when you're making biscuits. That way there's little to no waste. Now you're not gonna have very much waste because we're gonna fold this up just like we did. And we're gonna be doing it again. can't wait to eat these. And like I said, my mom would do this dish with just regular freezer biscuits. You know, there's shit ton of kids, you know, so it's not like she had as much time as I have now, you know, doing all this food. And I've taken, you know, food that I used to eat and I still eat. And I don't want to say I've taken it to another level because I haven't really you know, come up with anything new or come up with anything groundbreaking, but I've done the food, you know, the way I like. And that's all food really is, you know. You can use, you know, American 
ingredients with Italian techniques and it's still, you know, can come out as an Italian dish because that's all dishes are from all around the world. You know, that's why so many Asian cultures and so many Spanish cultures have a lot. I'm just forming this again so I can have, make sure I have the, it's right about the same thickness. So a lot of Asian and Spanish cultures have a lot of the same ingredients. You know, cilantro, they use lime, they use some of the same peppers. It's because when people would go to different countries and settle in those countries, now you want them about the same thickness, and they'd go and settle in these countries, they'd take the knowledge of what they would make or how they would make stuff and would incorporate it into the indigenous ingredients around the world or where they were now at, now living. So that's why you have so much crossover with a lot of the same dishes. Now it might look like I'm working the hell out of this dough or it might be getting too hot. It's still fairly cold, like I said. You know, I wanna move as quickly as possible. I don't want it to, to get too hot. I'm almost towards the end. And if I really had to, I could just throw this right back in. But like I said, it'll be perfectly fine. Now you will have a little bit of waste once you get right about the end because, you know, you get to the point where you can't make a, make a whole biscuit, you know, but it won't be as much as you think. Right. So one of these, I don't know if I'll be able to get a biscuit about the same size, but I should be able, a little bit of flour, should be able to get one regular size. Pop it down. That's a little bit thinner. So that's about how much we'll take and we'll just toss. So I'll talk you into the dishes that I am going to be making. These are not baked ahead. These are actually baked into the dish. And like I said, that chicken and biscuits would, uh, my mom would usually go and get, you know, a rotisserie chicken and she would get a can, family size can of cream of chicken soup. And then she would just get freezer biscuits. You know, there's not, no shame in getting a freezer biscuit. There's no shame in getting anything. I'm gonna put these back in the fridge just so they don't heat up and that butter starts to melt. Like I said, the flaky butter is what's gonna cause our biscuits to rise and elevate. Right. So my mom would go and get that. You know, she would cut up some onions and you know, she wouldn't char them like I do, but I like the char on those. She would just sweat them down. I like the char on these ones. Because when you char an onion, you know, or you caramelize an onion, you're bringing out that natural sweetness of that onion. Right? When you do that, you make it a more cohesive and a more sweeter dish. And then she would take that with the onion and with about a cup of sour cream, a half a cup to a cup of sour cream, Mix it all up, shred the chicken, and then she would take cheddar cheese and mix it into there. And then she would put it into a gre uh, grease bacon dish. Baking dish, not a bacon dish, like a baking dish. And she would cook it at 425 for about 20 minutes, just so everything got hot and heated up, right? Then she would take those biscuits and pop them right on top. Throw it back in the oven at 450. And then she would uh, bake off the biscuits until they were nice and golden brown. And wipe all this flour off. Put more flour on it when I grabbed it. And then she would take that dish. I'm going to face it up here, but I won't look at you guys too much. Because i got some cleaning and wiping down to do. But I figure it's more personal. You guys, you know, looking at me by looking at me and clean some shit up. So she would take this dish, and then that's what we would eat. And this dish would feed, like, me, my little sister, my little brother, my mom, my stepdad, you know? And it was just one of those dishes that you felt really good after eating. And that's my favorite part about comfort food and southern food, is, you know, it, it fucking really heals the soul. 
really makes you feel good. That's why they call it comfort food. You know? So, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna show you guys the entire dish, but I will show you what those biscuits look like. I'll show you one more time for everybody that came in after the fact. Is these cheddar and bacon and chive biscuits. This is almost similar to the uh, chive dumpling recipe that I have on uh, the blog site. Um, you know, I'm gonna be doing the blog site. I'm gonna try to have it updated pretty soon. You know, just I get burnt out of things and my mind works really weird and I start chasing other things, you know, doing other stuff and all this, you know, excuses shit. Um, you know, it's just like most people in this industry, you know, they don't come and cook at home when they get off of work. You know, they, they don't really like doing anything with numbers. Um, you know, when it comes to like sitting down and, you know, looking at a computer screen and typing stuff, we just hate doing it. We get backed up and then we're like that procrastinating student that, you know, is like, ah, oh, man, it's due in two weeks. I'll do it tomorrow. And then two weeks comes and then you're trying to do 14 essays three term papers, six quizzes all on the night before. Then you're stressed and you wonder why, like I'll never do this again. It's kind of like what it's like with me and the, the blog right now. I want to do it, I love sharing the recipes, but you know, it's just I just get bored of burn out of it and lose interest and then I pick it up and I lose interest again. So it's a real dichotomy is what I'm saying. So I'll show you, don't look over here though. Don't look over there. Got some messes that I'm going on with some, some dishes. Like I said, we've got those onions. We've got, that's hot as hell, guys. We've got our chicken thighs. Now, I always, whenever I do something like this, I always like to use chicken thigh, mainly because that and chicken legs, make sure you guys can actually see that. That and chicken legs are my favorite, favorite, favorite pieces of chicken to use. What I like doing is there's already chicken stock in here that I already seasoned, but I like to hit it with just a little bit more garlic powder. A little bit of more onion powder. A couple bay leaves. This chicken's almost done, so all I'm really doing now is fortifying that flavor. Salt. And a little bit of fresh ground black pepper. Now don't fake make fun of my little black pepper grinder. I broke the other one last week. I'm just waiting on a new one to come. And like I said, this liquid's already been seasoned. This is just chicken stock. It's already been seasoned. So I'm just adding on to that flavor, right? Like I said, I seared this chicken skin off till it was nice and golden brown. A little white wine, a little chicken, a uh, little chicken stock. And then we're gonna just take this once it's fork tender, which means, which we can kind of almost get it there. It's almost there. And we'll pull it apart once it's cooled down just a little bit. We'll mix all those ingredients that I told you about then we'll bake it and call it a day. So we are almost at, what was it, 2,400? Yeah, I think it's 2,400. We're almost at 2,400. The last time I checked, we were like 20, 22 away. So thank you for everybody that's been inviting your friends, liking and following the page after I've invited you. I appreciate that. Keep, if you haven't and you're watching now and you have not accepted or you had not liked or you have not followed this page, what the hell are you waiting for? What the hell are you doing? I've been talking about this for three months, guys. You come over here, see some videos, like and share this video. I love it. I love the interaction I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to go through the uh, comments. I'll respond to all the comments, so don't worry about that. Um, and we're going to do another video on Wednesday. I might do one tomorrow. I might not. So I got some meatballs that I made on Sunday. So I might, guy, I might show you guys how to do a pita, maybe. I don't know if I really want to make pita. I'm running out of space in there. But I might show you guys how to do that hoagie roll again. Or we might do a different hoagie roll and have meatball subs tomorrow. Um, 
Yeah, so I think that's what we're going to do. We're still voting Friday for the Ropa Vieja, Ropa Vieja, I'm sorry, which is a Cuban, like it's their dish. So like what our apple pie is to their Ropa Vieja, it is usually a pork roast flank steak that they have boiled, shredded. So you got a whole bunch of, you know, you got the peppers, the onions, the salt, the pepper, the garlic powder, the onion powder, garlic, onions, all this different ingredients. Um, and then they put over rice and it's traditional with black beans as well. Um, so we're going to do either that or a roast con pollo. If we're being completely honest, I did not expect it to be as close as it is. I expected one or the other to blow it out of the water. Um, however, you guys, by voting, um, have really kept it a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. So thank you for that. Um, whenever I put those engagement posts up there, like the one with the breakfast, um, the one with Ropa Vieja, uh, the reason behind the way I did it is to um, attract engagement to the page. Um, and that's like you get seen more when you interact by liking, hearting, um, you know, smiley faces, all that other stuff. You get more interaction. Your page gets spread across the board more when you interact that way. Now, I always go back and say, hey, man, thank you for the vote. I appreciate your vote. But go ahead and hit that like emoticon. When something like that happens, go to the like section. Hit the hit the thumbs up, the heart, the wow face, whatever it's you know asking. Hit it that way. And then post as many comments as you like. I love talking with you guys, so please keep it up. Uh, this video, this live video is a little down. I mean, I think we got it up to almost 10 people at one time, but it is Monday. Um, it is, you know, before six, a lot of you guys are back at work now. Um, so I might adjust the times a little bit so more people can see it towards the end of their days. Cause I think the uh, peak times right now are about seven o'clock, but that's just a little bit too late for me to eat. I want to have everything done. Me and my wife. And when my kid gets back from, you know, West Virginia, sit on the couch, watch some TV, hanging out, going for a walk with the dogs around the neighborhood. Um, so we're probably going to keep it around the same time, but if a lot of you guys want, uh, we can do it at a later time. But like I said, the next thing is up to you guys. So if you guys liked what you saw here, please share this video. Please like the video, heart the video. If I made you laugh, if uh, I made you go, wow, hit the wow button. Um, share this video. It's always great. Share the pictures that I'll show you guys later. Um, thank you guys for everybody that has been interacting with the page. I really appreciate it. Um, so keep it up. And check back in about an hour or so, uh, should be a little bit sooner than that, for that picture of our chicken and biscuits. I showed you guys how to make pizza dough. I told you I'd do that. Showed you guys how to make biscuits. We did that. So please, please, please be safe, be kind, have a great night, eat something good, send some pictures, and have a great Monday or the rest of your Monday. And I will see you at the latest on Wednesday. Bye.